Hi, we're just going to go over the short response that you did uh, on moderation day two. So hopefully it'll be of some value and hopefully you remember the questions. You won't remember your answers necessarily. So the first question was that book sales. Um, there was $100,000. Oh, hang on. Give me a pen. There was $100,000 in costs and 5,000 books. And then well, I'll just remove that. And then after that, there was 5,000 books and they cost $25,000. So the first question just talked about in the first in the first 5,000 books, um, what would be the cost for a book? So it's 100,000 divided by 5,000. So the zeros cross off and then 100 divided by five equals $20 a book. Um, a few people made errors in calculations, that one. Now in this next part, um, they're only going to charge $12 a book and you have to work out. Now this question here says show how long and I know how long could be time but there's no context of time in this question. It's talking about you know runs of 5,000 books so it's not a time and I know some people wrote you know 24 hours and stuff like that but there's no context. So you just have to work out what happens for each run of 5,000 books. So this is how you might have approached it. So for the first run you have 5,000 books, so this is number of books, this is uh, the income, uh, the cost, and then whether you're making a profit or you're making a loss. So in the first 5,000 books, uh, we've got $12 a book, so you had to do 5,000 times 12, 5, 12 is 60, so each run is going to be 60,000, so every run every run that you make is going to be sixty thousand dollars in income okay and we just have to work at how many runs of of the books we have to make before we make a profit so in the first run it's a hundred thousand dollars so after the first run you're down forty thousand dollars now after that the uh, charges are $25,000 in there. So it costs us $25,000. So the difference between those two numbers is $35,000. So after the second run, you're only down $5,000. So you're down $40,000 after the first, but you've made a profit of thirty-five. dollars so you're only down five. dollars So in the next one, you make it's another $25,000 the difference is $35,000, so you're going to be $30,000 in profit, so we don't need any more runs. So the answer was you need three runs and your profit is $30,000 because the question said how much would the profit be and how long would it take? So three runs is the, is the length of time and the profit is $30,000. Okay, you don't have to copy down because you're just watching. Okay, this next question we talked about in the uh, AST um, practice, um, just before the thing. So milk yield, you could look up the word yield, but it's milk per cow. Okay, so we had f five megalitres, so five megalitres, and we had 2,000 cows. So cross off the zeros again, and uh, 5,000 divided by 2 equals 2,500 litres per cow. That's the first one. Now in this next one, you had to work out the milk yield and you had to draw it on the graph. Now, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, so that's where it starts. And at the end, uh, 7.5 divided by 1.5 which is the same as 75 over 15, and that equals 5. So that's where it finishes. And then if you just did the calculations along the way, it, it ends up being uh, 5, 4.5, so that's about 3. And then it just kept creeping up if you did the calculations. If you did each of the calculations, I think I've just done that at 6, so that last point is at the wrong spot. So it just kept creeping up like that. So that was what the milk yield looked like. But you had to draw it on the graph above, which some people didn't do. Okay, so the line ended up being, it's, it was something like this. 
All right. All right. So that was that question. And then in, in the next part, okay, so here's my milk yield again. I just... So in the last part, you had to talk about... And the, this question, I think, was worth uh, three marks. So you had to say at least three different things. So you could talk about, so for instance, um, so the farms, they decrease from 115 down to 75, which, e which equals a 40 loss. And then as a percentage, um, that would be, so again, so what we talked about is that 10% of 115 is about 11 or 12, so that's about a 35% reduction. And the reduction was pretty linear, a linear decrease. Um, milk uh, went from 5, and then it dropped down to 4, and then it's and then it steadily, it's sort of not steadily increased, but it increased to 7.5. Now, if you look, you've looked at that. So from five to 7.5, um, without without looking at this. So from five to 7.5 is nearly double. So it's about a hundred. So it's about a hundred percent increase from the start to the finish. Um, five to 7.5. That's not 100 percent. That's only. F sorry. That's uh, from five. So from 5 to 7.5 is a 2.5, so that's a 50% increase from the start to the finish, from 76 through to 2006. But if you look at from the bottom point at 4, from 4 to 7.5, that's nearly double, so it's probably about a 90% increase from its lowest point. Okay. Uh, the number of cows went from 2,000 to 1,500. And then stayed steady, and then and then steady after that. And that's uh, that's a drop of five hundred, so that's a twenty five percent decrease. And the milk yield, milk yield, showed a steady increase from two point five. Um, that's thousands. It's two point five thousand liters per cow, up to five. And that's a steady increase, steady increase. And from 2.5 to 5 is definitely a 100% increase. Okay, so after that you could have said, well, the number of, the increase in, in milk yield, because that's the most important thing, the yield is the most important thing. Um, maybe more efficiencies in the, in the farms. Or it might be better cow, better, better breed of cows, but you didn't have to go into great detail for the reasons. You just had to sort of do analysis, and you've got to go with changes. Like for instance, this thing about it changed from five to four to seven point five. Not many people talked about the decrease initially, and then the increase. Some people picked up that the decrease here was about the same as the decrease there, and that was a good comment to make as well. Okay. Moving along, oh, link page, what's page three, what's page four, page four is nothing. Okay, this next one uh, was a tricky question. Uh, you just had to, you had an example, um, so for instance, D, uh, so D had uh, public, sorry, So you just had to sh had to work out the graph. So D, so it had a uh, private car 53. So you had to go sideways for the 53. So you had to understand what the graph was doing. Public transport, you had to come down on the angle to get the 35%. So again, you could have put the numbers here so you understood what was happening. Um, this was not, so you, you could have done that to help you understand what was happening. And this was increasing 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Uh, so this one was coming down this way. And then the last one uh, was going up on that angle. Okay. So for country E, which was way down here, um, what percentage 
was for private car. So private car, you had to go sideways, so it was about 10%. But I accepted anything around 9% as well. All right, so that's that first one. Let's move across. So this next one talked about what do the table and figures show about the relationship between the comparative use of different forms and a country's income. And basically, you had to look at a group of countries, not individual countries, because you, individual countries changed and you couldn't make any sense of it, but you had to look as a group. And what I did when I did it, well, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And then, so I had uh, low transport, and then I had private car, and then I had public. And then if you look at the percentages, then you can see what's happening. So what I did was I did the, um, we well could use, let's do the uh, private, private car. So we had to go sideways for the first ones. So um, D we already knew for private car. So D, I'm going to just make them whole numbers, so private car, I'm going to do all the private cars first and then I'll do the others. So D was at 55, uh, B was at 90, so I'm just going sideways, uh, A was at 35, uh, C was at 10, G was close enough to 10, E was close enough to 10, H close enough to 5, uh, I need F, 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 10, you know, let's say 20, okay, okay, that's, that's so I've done all the private cars, now I'm going to go up to low transports, uh, so low transport, so B is at 5, D is at, D was about 10, A is at 0, C do, 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 is about 15, uh, F, okay, 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, okay, so I'm up to E, mm. so E is at about 85, uh, F is at about, th F is about 35, G is about 25, and H is right down at 80. Okay, and then I did the last one. Last one is public. So to get public, you have to go on, on that angle. Okay, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So, okay, so A, so we're coming down on angle, so A is about 75, B is at about 5, coming down, C, C, C is at about 75, uh, D, 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 D is at about 35. E is at about 5, doesn't really matter, it's really low. H is at 15, while I'm down there. F, F is at 50. And G is at 65. So once you've got the information in this form, then you can look for things that are similar. So for instance, they're all similar, and they're all similar, but that's all that's similar. Like for instance, public 5, 5 to 75, you can't comment that there's any pattern. 5 to 65, there's no pattern. 25 and 35 versus 80, there's no pattern. 10 and 35 versus 90, there's no pattern. So basically, you just have to say for high income earners, the only thing they didn't use, they didn't use low, trans didn't use low cost transport. And for the others, there's no others. There's no correlation. Uh. 
and for the low incomes the only thing that's common is they had low use of, they had low use of private cars of private vehicles and for the others there's no correlation you didn't have to go into anything else you didn't have to break up the countries because that's not what the question is asking it's talking about the, the average low average and high average okay all right moving on okay this next one again um, was about the quackers um, and the first question and I didn't actually write it down the first question is what's the total what was the total population of quackers what total died now the official answer was actually 300 and there was one girl who wrote 300 and I'd love to know how she got that but my, my all I marked was the start of the thousand went up to 1250 halfway and then dropped down to a thousand so as far as I, can, I was concerned 250 died but the official answer was 300 but I didn't give didn't give any I didn't give anyone wrong for 300 but I just couldn't work out what they were talking about so that was my answer oh so so this question this question was about figure one and the next question was about table one and some people in this question talked about the wrong thing they talked about the diagram so that means they got automatically got no marks for that question so in this diagram um, you know the, the peak you just had to comment so the peak was at 1250 in you know uh, January Feb um, it started at a thousand in August and it by the next July so the population was stable from by by the end of the year so it had a peak um, so the peak the peak was when um, most of the babies had been born but you didn't have to comment about that um, but that's basically all you had to do so you could have said it increased by 250 and then it decreased by 250 you didn't have to do anything more than that okay in this next question we're talking about the table so this is when you had to make um, this one was also th that one was worth two marks this one was worth three marks and so three marks means you must make more than two or one thing you've got to talk about three things so the thing I notice okay so eggs laid versus thing so if there are 520 eggs and there are only 340 nests therefore between one and two eggs per nest on average okay you could say 1.5 so that was one thing um, next thing uh, okay eggs that produced eggs that produce young in nest versus eggs so 100 eggs didn't produce young now that's all well and good but a hundred out of 520 is about a hundred over 500 so it's about 20 percent didn't produce young okay so we have to use we have to use better maths than just saying a hundred okay, it's good that you said a hundred but um, okay so the next one young that left nest versus eggs that hink so we had 120 young died in the nest now that's all well and good to say 120 but 120 out of 420 so we're looking at 12 over 42 um, so 10 percent of 42 is 4 so it's about 30 percent died in the nest okay um, nests that produce young that left okay okay nests that produce young versus nests uh, cracker nests so we had uh, 90 nests did not produce young now it's all well and good to say 90 but we're going to do 90 over 340 
cross off. So 10% of 34 is about 3. So again, we've got about 30% of nests did not produce did not produce young. That left the nest. So there, I've said four different things, and I've used mathematics. That's all you had to do. But three marks means you've got to do at least three things, and they better be good three things. Okay? A lot of people worked out these numbers but didn't convert them into percentages. Okay, next. Okay, so this next one. Um, so we had to work out why Kim, using tables one and two, would make the wrong decision. Now, the number of people who just said that Kim ignored table one is wrong because it said they have to use table one and two. So you can't say she didn't look at those figures and just looked at table two. That's not what the question is asking. You have to work out how could Kim have got those numbers. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. So um, drug A, 66 plus 92 equals 158. And in B, so 66 and 92. And the other one is 68 and 88 equals 156. So more people got cured by A. That's all you could say. Or you could have said, you know, the average... Um, was 79 versus the average was 78. So again, that's another way that Kim could have made the mistake. But you had to use both tables. You can't say that Kim didn't even look at the table and she just ignored it. But that's how Kim could come to the wrong decision. Okay. So the question was the next part. Nat reaches a different conclusion. And Nat is right. <sighs> ah. Nat, is, Nat has made the right decision. So if you put, if you put Kim there, you automatically got no marks. You had to say Nat and you had to say why. And the reason is, you know, Nat's used all the data from both experiments and correctly calculated the average. Okay? You know, Kim made the mistake of averaging averages. You can't average averages when the number of people in the trials were, weren't good. Now, some people said it would have been good if the trials had been at the same number, but you didn't have to worry about that. And a lot of people picked up, some people, not a lot, some people picked up that 540 was the wrong number. It should have been 560, but that's okay. All right, moving on. Okay, uh, getting towards the end now. Let's see the last question. So we had these numbers and you had to work out how paper A could argue that they're good, how paper B could argue that they're good, or how pa people, paper C could be argue that they're good. So for A, um, they had growth in both circulation and readership. And they were the only ones who had both, who had both. Okay. Um, you could also said that the 6.8, that the circulation growth was the highest. Okay, 6.8 versus 0.8 versus 4.5. 6.8 had the highest circulation, um, and also 1.9 was the only was readership was the only growth. Okay, so that's how A could have argued that they're going great. Um, B, the only way that B could argue that they're going good or going well is that they've got the highest readership. That's the only way that paper B can argue that they're going well because they're losing, they're losing circulation and they're losing readership, but they've got the highest readership. And in paper C, they haven't got the highest readership, they haven't got the highest circulation, but at least they've got a circulation. But 398 versus 391 versus 2, they've got the highest circulation. And it's growing. So most people did fairly well in that, but you had to work out how you could argue that each of them are going well. Okay, thanks. Bye.